the college experience, Minnesota golden Gophers 2020 season preview on the sports gambling podcast network is presented by my bookie.ag. You're listening to our 2020 college football preview series, where we break down every single division one college football team. When betting on college football, make sure you go to mybookie.ag and use the promo code SGP for a deposit bonus up to $1,000. That's mybookie.ag, promo code SGP. You play, you win, you get paid over at mybookie.ag. Yes, yes, yes. Woo-wee. Welcome. Welcome to the college experience. My name is Colby Swingin' Dantabase Dant, aka Pick Dun D in the place to be. And I'm joined by my co host, former, former James Madison offensive back, Patty C in the place to be. Hello. Patty C, if you're going to row this boat. Yes. You got to get, we got to get in unison. We got to get the energy levels up. You know, it's almost like we're talking a little pre pre pod here about, uh, comparing a likely matchup. Um, in fact, are they on the schedule? I'm referring to, uh, one Jim Harbaugh, uh, bringing energy unknown to mankind to the table every day. That is certainly the same approach that PJ Fleck brings to the table. And as you're saying, Harbaugh may just be a little too old school, too old school. Uh, Fleck Fleck is the future is the modern Harbaugh. The positive vibes. Harbaugh. I agree. Row that boat because this team is here to stay. Wow. They're here to stay. You look at what's coming back. First off last season, I pretty sure I had the under the right. Did I have the under on them? Let's take a gander at old uh, Minnesota seven and a half. We all took the under and we all I, missed. Mm, old PJ, still a safe bet. I think I had him at seven and five or six and six. Seven and a half was pretty high expectations. And boy, did he did he connect he exceed the expectations? That seems to be a recurring theme in the. Uh, career of PJ. I mean, Fleck. if his kicker makes a field goal, they're probably eleven and one in the regular season. Then they beat Auburn in that bowl game. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that was that was a hell of an exclamation point on that season, wasn't it? Yeah. Getting it done. This team is loaded too. Talking about looking at the future here, Patty C. They have one of the best quarterbacks in the nation. Yep. They have one of the best wide receivers in the nation. Also true. They have a talented backfield. Uh, not quite as talented as the other two positions. I think it's deep though. And then they have five returning Abraham, offensive linemen. Abraham is a, uh, a decent performer, but he's not, and not, not a bona fide star just yet. But Whereas Tanner well, Morgan. Yeah. Is a bona fide star. Rashad Bateman is a bona fide star. And, and there was talk that they're going to get that Nebraska transfer. Who's from Minneapolis, I believe. Uh, a wide receiver, but we, that's not determined at the moment, but, uh, Oh, you know, looking at their schedule, they do host Michigan this year. That's what I'm saying. Bring so. it on, bring it on. They're going to beat them. Um, giving you a sneak preview, but this team brings back five offensive linemen. I, and I, a court and, and, uh, some of their offensive line depth too. I mean, that is invaluable to, to in, in, in all of our reviews, half of the, uh, Reviews that we've done so far, Minnesota appears to have the most veteran offensive line. Offense in general, when you consider like the, one of the best quarterbacks coming back, yeah. playing under center. Nine of 11 starters yeah. on one of the better offenses in college football. Mm. That's mm. phenomenal. And even on the defensive side of the ball, yeah, sure, four players got drafted. <laughs> Colby's a little more uh, bullish. Bullish. They're the, the number 11 Minnesota defense, defense last year. Although, certainly, yeah, the, the numbers speak for themselves, but uh, returning talent, not quite as uh, I love the secondary. Frequent. Secondary's got Coney Durr. They got Jordan, ha- uh, Jordan Howden. 
and Benjamin Saint Just Juste I don't, Juste. I don't know how to say it. But this team, like the D line, a little bit of worries. Yeah. They got a Notre Dame transfer in there. Uh wait. Do I have that do I have that right? Notre Dame transferred the D the Notre Dame transferred the No, I'm drawing a blank. I believe they have a Notre Dame transfer uh, anchoring the nose tackle position. I think you're right. I think you're right. I didn't make a note of that. Either way, uh, Minnesota has a little bit of work up front. Uh, but I, I'm telling you, when you coach the 11 best team on defense and we'll look at what he did at Western Michigan, I believe that he can coach you to be that defensive tackle. Well, I've certainly got the size at this point. So, <laughs> uh, look, this team can play ball, dude. And I could add news for you. Uh, they're here to stay. Look at the, go through those recruiting rankings. Recruiting rankings dating back to 2016, which would be the fifth year seniors. Um, I hate to tell you, but they're not phenomenal. Well, but he wasn't there. PJ Fleck was rowing the boat in West Kalamazoo. West. Then that's right. That's true. Uh, 2016, they were number 46. 2017, number 59. Makes sense. So probably a lot of players left as as Fleck came in. Yep. When 18, I would say what would likely be his first full class. Number 38. Great for a first year Getting into the top 40, yeah. right? 45, his second year, 38 again with this, uh, incoming freshman class we'll be seeing this year. So he's, he's hovering in that but low forties, no, no, no. high thirties. See what happened here though, is he, first year they had a losing record. Second year, they barely made a bowl game. Third year, they win 11 games. Sure. The tide has turned. It's easy to see a tide turned. turn, Patty C. And they are currently in the 2021 recruiting class sitting at number 20. That's what I'm so talking if about. This is a sign of things to come, both from a trajectory or even if they stay exactly where they are at a recruiting standpoint. If you're bringing in number 20 recruiting classes and this guy is able to win 11 games with an average of probably number 45 recruiting class. I don't think any we're telling you guys anything you don't already know. PJ Fleck is a hell of a fucking here to hell stay. Of a coach. And I like to think it started when they got when they stopped playing in that filthy dome and built that outdoor stadium. Yeah, and and just made dude. I used to be a hater on on Minnesota because they played in the dome. Yeah. Now they got that outdoor stadium. They're like one of my favorite college football teams. This team, I, look Fleck, please bring a national championship. It's not that I mean they had some dominant years back then. Yeah, the day. we we were just peeking uh, peeking back at the annals of history and uh, noticed that they had five national titles in eight years, starting it <laughs> from uh, 1934 to 1941. No, 19. 19- oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but just a lot of great years where they probably won. I mean, back then, if you go undefeated, I don't know, they would just give a national championship. To, it's still <laughs> still the same sort of to this day. Yeah, but, um, pretty much. Yeah, no, no, lots of undefeated seasons. I'll put it yeah. like that. I believe the last team to win uh, the national championship in the uh, or three consecutive national championships and the first team to win a national championship in the uh, wire era. I think Fleck might have to do four in a row coming up. Four straight national championships. Well, if they get a real playoff, you are the Beano Cook of Minnesota football. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, they beat Auburn, buddy. You know who couldn't beat Auburn last year? The Crimson Tide of mm. Alabama. Mm. Very funny how that works. It is funny. Uh, okay. Well, we are going to go game by game breaking down. Well, we know COVID hit, so they're not going to play Florida Atlantic, Tennessee Tech, or BYU anymore. But the nine game uh, big, big Ten schedule, and obviously the Big Ten is going to add another game in there at some point. We'll hypothesize on what might that be, and um, and we'll go from there. Talking Minnesota Golden Gopher football with Patty C on the college experience. Row the boat. Row, Row the, the boat. boat. Row, Row the, the boat. boat. We'll be back after these messages from our sponsor. We're back. Rowing the boat on the college experience with Patty C and pick done D whoo. That's not a pick. This is a pick. And then look, this is a pick to see a team that is going to finish in the top 15 telling you right now, Patty C. <laughs> well, their schedule certainly sets up. Interestingly, obviously the nine game conference schedule makes it a little easier to schedule um, on conference only 10 game schedule. All you got to do is add one more, but an early buy, or I guess what won't be played is against BYU 
No, so. they're going to move that Iowa game there, I believe. Okay. So Saturday, September 26th, they'll probably be playing the Hawkeyes as they try to buy as much time from COVID. I they're the Iowa game was a great game in in uh in Iowa City last year. They had their chances to win that game, missed a field goal, and then uh you know the wheels fell off. Man. But opening the season for Floyd of Rosedale, they're gonna win that. They're gonna win that in, in Minneapolis. Man, bold statement. You can take that to the bank, Patty C. Wow. I mean, Kirk Ferentz uh probably has a fire lit under his ass after a tumultuous offseason. Um now, Iowa, we're not playing in Iowa City, and so I was breaking in a new quarterback. Th- and PJ Flex, damn good. I, I actually might even th- I don't know. It's tough to say. We gotta give uh Kirk Ferentz has earned the respect of, of a Of course. I love some Kirk Ferentz. And, Ferentz, and but the reputation, but I mean when you talk about like they're winning this game. The win Minnesota's winning this game. I agree with you. I think Minnesota with Tanner Morgan, they're gonna get they're gonna keep the ball moving. They have the answers for that hard as nail Hawkeye defense and enough answers. I'll say no one has the answers to the Hawkeye defense, but they have enough week two. They're at Maryland win. Yeah. This is the biggest game of the year right here. Who this is for the division Not Maryland, but this next one, In Saturday, October, or October 10th, Minnesota is going to get revenge on the, ba- the Badgers of Wisconsin and camp Randall. But if there's no fans there, Patty C, I say the more talented roster is the Gophers? Well, we're three months out, I believe. Yes, August, September, October. If fans are there, I'm taking Wisconsin all day. With yeah, no he, fans, give me Minnesota. Randall jumping around, but uh, it's I expect the dogfight either There's way. There's one really good quarterback in this game, and it ain't Jack Cohn. Yes, <laughs> uh, that's true. And if that, there's no fans, if there's fans, I'm taking Wisconsin all day. That's a big if, buddy. We need some a little more certainty out of you. What's going to happen here? I'm taking, I'm taking Minnesota. If I there's actually, one game they lose though, it's going to be this yeah. actually. No, give me, <sighs> give me Minnesota, man. I think I agree with you. Give me that. Minnesota. I mean, he's just, he's got them playing so well coming out of last year and that offense has come and the defense, even though they're losing so much was so, Look, Minnesota turned into a hell of a team last year. Yeah. And which isn't to say Wisconsin isn't still awesome. And I mean, this is going to be a great game. Th- this is the sleeper best game on the big 10 schedule. Then they follow that up back at their beautiful outdoor stadium. They host the Michigan Wolverines <sighs> win. Yeah. They have more talent. I mean, we just, we just reviewed Michigan and, uh, as big of a Wolverines guy as I am, like especially in Minneapolis, uh, right now they're ahead of them, especially with Michigan not having the opportunity to break in quarterbacks in spring and in their little uh, scrub games yeah. to start the season. Minnesota is going to be ahead of Michigan at this point. Uh, for some reason, this following game at the Illini. <laughs> well, they have been known to bite, jump up and bite. Someone. For some reason, I feel like this one is dangerous. Well, uh, well, cause I feel like you get off the winds of Wisconsin and Michigan. You're probably riding high. You yeah, lay an egg ripe for a letdown in champagne. And then uh lovey has been pulling in transfers with tons of experience, high talent guys, yeah, big 10 doing them no favors by setting them up two sets of back-to-back away games. Do they ever do that for Michigan or Ohio state? Uh, less frequently. I'm sure I will say this. Illinois may be emerging as the uh, Arizona state of the big 10, a team with talent that doesn't have the mental aspect of the game together every week. But when they get it together on occasion, look out, you taking the fighting Illini. I'm not, I'm taking Minnesota. I'm taking Minnesota, but I think it's going to be a close one. Yeah. At Michigan state. I think they just have too much talent for Michigan state. They yep. win home to Purdue dangerous game, but, but I think uh, they beat Purdue. Yeah. They get a bye week. They're home to Northwestern. That's a win. And this is where I have them slipping. Hmm. Final game of the season, Friday, November 27th. Well, like I said, there's, there's a, there's another game in here somewhere. Maybe it's Saturday, November 14th. Yeah. If they get Ohio state on this thing, if they draw Ohio state or Penn state, then obviously they might lose. But if not, I think they could run this table. Well, here's the thing. They currently only have four games on their big 10 schedule at home five away. So any game that they're getting on top of that is coming to that beautiful outdoor stadium. And hopefully like December. Yeah. 
I want fucking snow. I want real football, not this bullshit retractable roof nonsense. All yeah. right. And I got the Cornhuskers upsetting them. Look, I would have them beating uh, Nebraska too, straight up. But I think that this team is going to lose one, whether it be Wisconsin, Michigan, maybe a slip against a team like Illinois or Michigan State or Nebraska. Um, I just can't see them. I'm I'm not ready it, to see them as undefeated. Yeah. To me, it's it's circle the Wisconsin game, circle the Nebraska game. Yeah. But a lion eye too. A lion eye too. They're gonna have a great season. I could see nine and one. I could see nine and one. I could even see ten and two. You let the right bounce at the right time happen. How can you see ten and two if they're only playing ten and zero? I mean ten, 10 and, and 0. 0. Okay. Uh, look, this team, row the friggin' boat. What's the biggest game of the schedule? Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Wisconsin all day. Yeah, all day. We both agree there. Going uh, up to Camp Randall, especially because Michigan is cross division. That. Yeah. may end up having very little impact. Certainly Iowa out the gates, but I think they'll be ready for that. Four years from now, will PJ Fleck be at Minnesota? Certainly hope so. Me too. We're Come just, on Fleck, stay the course. We're trying to think of like places where Fleck could go. I obviously, I, I think, don't want him to go anywhere. Right, right, I right. want a college football. That was like when I was growing up when you had consistency in coaching, where they stayed there yeah. and you developed rivalries and great programs, like change places over time. It yeah. wasn't, always one program stays great for 50 years straight. You know, yeah, yeah. there's a little like the turnover. diversity. Yeah. Diversity. You come back up, you fall down, you come up, come on, you know, let's and I do think it here. Minnesota is ready. And they found it. And what I meant to say by where could he go is who could legitimately steal men, uh, PJ flight from Minnesota, given that Minnesota is a pretty decent job and he's turning it based on his recruiting into a, I think Minnesota has resources. I think there's some talent in that Minnesota, you know, yeah. Chicago ish. Yeah. You know? Um, so I mean, really he's a big 10 guy, you know, he spent his whole career up saying. North. stay the course. There's only a Keep few rowing. places row this fucking boat I don't even into think the he, national championship. They could. I don't yeah. even think he'd leave for Wisconsin. I don't think he'd leave for a Nebraska unless they're in Ohio like, state. Ohio State, which we just realized he had some ties to early on about 14 years ago. But a Notre Dame. Notre Dame could certainly get him. That would be filthy. Michigan or Stay Penn State. In Minneapolis, row that boat. Yeah, get him row winning. Row that boat. Let's get some top 10, 15 recruiting classes out of PJ. Yeah, I want a natty. I want a, I want a Minnesota national championship there. That would be so fun. Let's do it. Uh, guys, we are the college experience. We're breaking down all 130 college football division one football teams. How many times can I say football on that thing? <laughs> but don't worry. We, well, it's, I haven't had it in so long. I'm just saying football all the time. All right. I mean, it's I, comfort sleeping next to the lady. I'm just sitting there in the middle football. of the night. Football, football. There you go. You know what I mean? Grabbing a handful and yeah. Imagining you're and running she's Columbia. She thinks I'm talking soccer. Football. Yeah. You know, we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. I know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this. I'm talking about the gophers rowing that boat all the way. And if you want to row the boat with us, because we're going to be rowing the boat on social media. Subscribe to the College Experience. All 130 teams. Patty C's rowing the boat on on Twitter at Patty C831. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D. Ten thousand lakes up in Minnesota. You guys better be rowing that boat. Row that boat, baby. Uh, we are still with the with the Sports Gambling Podcast, Sports Gambling Podcast Network, which is available on Twitter at the SGP Network. Check out our recent Jerry Glanville interview. Great podcast. I think you guys will all enjoy. He's rowed the boat before in life. He's still rowing the boat behind the automobile. Anyway, this is the college experience rate review share on iTunes. You better start thinking about yours and we out.